Welcome everyone to Dead Talk Live, and tonight we have Max Osinski with us from Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. and just debuted this past Sunday, The Walking Dead World Beyond. Max, thank you so much for being here with us. How are you doing? Great, John. Thank you for having me. It is our pleasure. And nice I'm looking to be with everyone. Exactly. I mean, I am really looking forward to our chat tonight. And before we get to anything else, congratulations. This past Sunday, you made your debut on The Walking Dead World Beyond, uh, a franchise that this month is celebrating its 11th year. How does it feel wow. now to officially be in The Walking Dead Universe family? Ah, uh, uh, it's, um, it's exciting and, and it's hard to believe. I mean, uh, that's 11 seasons. I remember when the show premiered and, uh, it was such a huge debut and such a huge hit. And then, um, to just suddenly find yourself on one of the, uh, the shows in the universe is, is exciting. Um, and it was actually it's my first time I ever auditioned for anything on The Walking Dead. So when I got it, it was really, um, really exciting. And I was so I'm very grateful and uh, happy to be a part of the whole whole universe and contribute in any way I could. Now, were you a fan when you went into the audition or did you have to do some research on the whole Walking Dead franchise? Um, I what I did originally I started watching like the entire world the first couple of seasons um, and I loved it but um, I then had a kid and just like life got really full for me and crazy um, and so I, I haven't been able to keep up with the entire 11 seasons of the show I, I watched the first season of Fear of the Walking Dead and I thought that was terrific I had some people on there that I knew um and then walking dead world beyond i had to i i got i like binge watched that season when i was uh auditioning for uh the second and final season of the show all right so it was a mix it was a mix i was a fan and then i had to remind myself and then i had to catch up on some stuff um that's so it was a fine. bit of both yeah i mean it's like what three shows 11 years that's a lot of binge watching to do i mean it's a lot it's a lot and i totally uh totally understand now was this something that you and your agent uh was a role that you guys really actively pursued and that's how you got the audition or did just the pieces fall into place uh the, the pieces kind of just fell into place i got uh an appointment from my my team and i threw it down at the beginning of uh january and it was you know i thought it was a I, I loved the audition material i thought the character was great and you know like with any other part you kind of like you do your best and it was a self-tape kind of like uh most things are now in the business and we sent it off um and then it was kind of radio silence for about two weeks uh until i got a call later when i was in new york saying um there's some interest. We, can you do a callback? Uh, they have some notes and stuff. And then it went into uh, talk, spoke with casting. They gave me some notes and adjustments. So I re taped it from New York. And then I sent that off. And casting was really positive about it. They loved what, the adjustments. And it was, again, like pretty quiet for like about seven days. But they said, you know, you're in the mix, you're their choice. Um, and then you just kind of, then you just wait for the official call. And then I got another call and they say, now the producers and the director and, and casting, I want to meet you live on a Zoom. So I had to do the audition again live for everyone this time on Zoom and with um, everyone sitting there, which was, which is a completely different experience from like your yeah. uh, old school way of auditioning where you go in the room. Um, but Luckily, I, me and my wife, we were both actors and we kind of just adapted to the, the times. And because of the pandemic, it's kind of fast forwarded, you know, self-taping now. So we we've adapted and we had all, all the gear we needed to, to, you know, put our best foot forward. And um, I did the callback with the whole team and that went well. And then I think like about a day or it was a two days later, I got the uh, official call and the offer and. I was I was excited to get started. 
was this the first time you had to do an audition that involved a Zoom call? I mean, self tapes, that's just the way auditions are done now. But the callback and the Zoom in front of the casting directors and some of the producers, is this the first time you ever had to do that? No, no. Uh, uh, luckily, no. I. It's been kind of this way uh, for the past few years, I would say. And then because of the pandemic, like I said, it accelerated everything. So now most of the time, re- ever rarely if there's a callback, do you go in the room? It's now Zoom sessions, either with the director or the whole creative team. So it wasn't my first time doing that. So I had some... Um, experience with that um and as long as you have you know good audio and a decent camera you can you can uh make it a lot make it through you know exactly so you you play dennis <clears throat> graham uh who is a part of the crm now there are some people who haven't watched it yet this uh past sunday's episode tell us about your character dennis who is a part of the crm in world beyond um he's He's an ex. He he's a soldier, ex soldier, military man. He was kind of the golden boy of the CRM, and he's trying to pick up the pieces of his life. Um, and I want to tell you as much as I can without telling you anything. I know, I know, no. uh, yeah, that's why I asked without it. getting it. Yeah, totally, yeah. Um, but I know the third episode is out on AMC Plus, so you know I don't want to spoil too much for people. I haven't even seen the third one yet, but. He, he is someone who's picking up the pieces in his life, and that's kind of where we meet him in episode two. And as the season goes on, you'll kind of learn more about him and his relationship to the other people in the show and some of his history, which I thought was really, was really great as an actor to just dive into and explore. So we do get a backstory at some point. Uh well, I don't want yes. to get you into trouble. Just a simple, yeah, maybe. Okay, we'll move on. Yeah, yeah. Maybe we'll <laughs> move on, yeah. <laughs> uh, so you are associated with Huck on the show, uh, played by Annette Mahandrew, who is also a, uh, one of our prior guests. Um, how did you find working with the cast? Uh, just the onset environment, the world beyond is filmed uh, in the state that I live in, in Virginia, in Richmond. Uh, you know, how did you feel with the environment, the set, your, uh, your colleagues, castmates, did you fit in right away? Uh, did they, you know, we hear over and over again throughout the whole universe in the walking dead, how, uh, you know, existing cast members come to new cast members and they welcome into the family. What was your experience like when you first walked onto that set? Um, very the experience was fantastic but like with anything when you're stepping on a show that's kind of established um and in this case it was a recurring role um as that actor coming on the show you you never know like what the vibe the chemistry and the the situation is on set so you're always kind of you know trying to feel it out as you as you jump into the pool um with this season because of the pandemic everyone had to um, quarantine and test in so it wasn't um everyone was kind of separated until they got to set to to shoot or to rehearse even the table reads uh, i got to meet the cast at a table read um prior to me flying out to richmond um but i didn't really get to meet anyone in person until we started shooting the the scenes but I, as far as working with Annette, she was terrific. She reached out um, right after I got the role and, you know, welcomed me to the show. And um, they arranged a, a call for us to, to chat about the parts and, and just um, get to know one another. Um, so she was very welcoming, as was Hal Cumston and everyone else as I, as I got to meet them on the show. So it, it was a relief because everyone was wonderful as I got to meet them and the crew, the cast, costumes, everyone, Matt, the showrunner. Um, but it is always like when you're stepping in as a, you know, as an outsider to, to an established show, you, 
you're kind of feeling you're yeah. kind of like blindfolded in the dark trying to feel out like okay you know where do i fit in what's the vibe um but luckily i felt i got lucky with this show because everyone was terrific and welcoming and it felt like i was part of the family as soon as i arrived so now as you just nothing mentioned but love, nothing but love uh, Matt Negri, who is the showrunner for World Beyond, uh, and of course Scott Gimple, who's the chief operating officer overseeing the whole uh, franchise. Uh, was Matt, uh, did you get the part and then get to meet Matt, or was Matt one of the producers that was sitting in on the auditions? Matt sat in on the the final callback. Okay. Um, and was there to give some notes. And then once I got the role, uh, we exchanged some emails and then we got on, um, then he was kind enough to set up a, a meeting before I left for Virginia, where he talked about the, the role and, and the backstory of the world that he had created and just to fill me in and fill in the gaps that I might've had. Cause you only get the audition scenes and no scripts when you're, yeah. when you're, um, especially when you're auditioning for walking dead. So, yeah, I had gotten to know him, and then I met him on set on the second episode, which I, my character appears in, um, and it was wonderful. And he was there and very supportive and collaborative and everything. Now, uh, you know, we all know The Walking Dead. I mean, every television show, movie is very secretive about their stuff, as they should be. They don't want leaks. Uh, when you first started getting, when you got the role and you started getting the scripts, did they only give you like one episode at a time uh, or did you know your character's story arc from beginning, which was this past Sunday to whenever that end might be? And I'm not asking you when the end is. I'm asking you, did they sort of give it to you as you needed it, episode per episode, or did they give you well in advance what's going to happen to your character? Oh, I wish I got an advance. It was, <laughs> it was uh, episode per episode. Um, we shot this in blocks of two episodes and it was a new director in each block. Uh, but it was, a, yeah, it was a surprise to everyone as you would get the new script. So you, I had no idea what I was walking into as far as how long it would be and what would end up happening to the character. Um, so they were always a few steps ahead of me. Now as an always, yeah. No, I'm sorry. I was just going to say, as an actor, uh, is that a plus or a minus? Like, uh, I would think it might bring some authenticity uh, to the way you portray a role. But the way you see it, how do you see it? Do you see it as a as a plus or a minus? Basically getting the script and you're like, okay, I got to get into this mode now. And then getting the second episode script. Okay, now I'm progressing this way. How do you feel about that as an actor? Do you see that as, as a positive or a negative? Um, I see that as kind of mirroring a little bit of life. I mean, we don't we don't know what's going to happen exactly. to us in the future. You know, um, it, you kind of you get uh, you get as much as you can um, when you initially get the role. And Matt was very um, helpful with kind of telling me where what the backstory was for Dennis and just giving me a little, a hint of maybe what they're going for moving forward. But plot wise, you, you don't know. Um, so it doesn't really hurt me personally. I mean, in a movie, maybe you, it's good to know where you are in the story. TV is very different, um, obviously. So yeah. you kind of just have to, trust the the writers and trust your own process and your own instincts and and the cast members around you um and you know it's just like real life you don't know what's going to happen to you, you exactly know, and that's weeks, why months years from now yeah i yeah. think it helps you yeah because yeah. otherwise you can kind of be like oh you know i know my character is going to end up doing this and you start playing the end mm -hmm. of a of a episode or of a of a season before your character might know. And I think that's, so I think it kind of helps. Yeah. That's why I mentioned, actually. did it help bring some authenticity is because like you said, in daily life, we don't know what's going to happen from day to day. So uh, I think as an actor, well, it will definitely keep you on your toes, at least that much. <laughs> now, uh, yeah, yeah. now a lot of people know you from 
Agents of Shields, Marvel's Agents of Shields. If you were to compare the two characters, uh, the character you're playing now on World Beyond to the character you played on Shield, would you say they're similar? They're two completely polar opposite characters. What's your take on that? I I would say they're completely opposite. Um, on Shield, uh, Davis Agent Davis, who I was playing, was more of a everyman in this Marvel universe. You know, he didn't have superpowers. He didn't have. Um, he wasn't a. He was. I would say he was the everyman in the show, um, and helped serve the story there um, with the surrounding characters. Um, and it was kind of like the, the character you would look to, like, how would an everyday person behave in this amazing, fantastical world that they created on the show? Um, on Walking Dead, I think it's, um, there are a couple more layers to Dennis. Um, and there's a lot a lot more has happened to him and um so i without going without again uh getting into trouble Mm -hmm. um yeah i would say they're complete complete opposites in my opinion okay that's fair enough yeah now uh when you did get the role did amc announce uh your casting or did you have to keep it secret uh you know pretty recently until the, the episode was about to debut uh, no, we we they they kept it pretty secret for a few months. I remember, and then I forgot how long ago was it. They they announced it on I think it was like in Deadline or something mm-hmm. um, a few months ago. Um, so it wasn't under wraps, and it wasn't under wraps until the show aired. But it was um, they did keep it close to the vest for months after I got the part. Like I think we started filming in February, but it wasn't even announced till i think late spring or at least yeah. i don't i got it wasn't I that long check. ago i don't remember yeah. yeah it wasn't that long ago yeah so uh you know as part of you getting the role did the walking dead team you know train you at all in dealing with these zombies uh, as, as a crm soldier your job is to well the crm is very secretive we really don't know what their end game is uh so but being a soldier in the crm and taking care of the dead the zombies the walkers on the show uh did they give you any kind of training did you do any kind of uh did you have any stunt guys working with you when we assume down the line you're going to have some interactions with the dead how did that work out? Did they, you know, did they give you any extra training? Did they have somebody with you? Um, whenever there were there are stunts or fight scenes in the show, they do have amazing um, stunt choreographers and stunt fighters uh, training with the actors. Whether you're using weapons, uh, knives, spears, or guns, so um, everyone in the cast, whenever and if they do have those kind of scenes, there is really good training um, as you people can probably see from the show um so yeah they provided that when it was needed um and the rest i kind of just as far as being a soldier and what that means to to me and as a character that's something i just worked on on my own as well uh with the guy with the character um trying to find you know the three like i found like three different levels to to dennis there was the military side and then there's this maternal side and then there's this side where he has some some demons and some baggage that he's trying to get through so i i i tried to work on those three layers with him um and then just to have a good grasp of which side was being um explored any, in any given episode. Um, mm-hmm. And then whenever there was any fun uh, stunt training or fight training, like with all movies, they, they, they work with the actors to help you look as good as possible and help sell, and help tell the story. So yeah, credit goes to the stunt guys on the show. They were really good. And the, and the people playing the zombies too. Yeah. They're, 
yeah, I learned because it was my first Walking Dead. I I learned how how much work those zombies put in moving like that, even the way we kill them and how they would react to a blow. Um, those actors are really good mm -hmm. at what they do to help you look good as well. So yeah, props to those guys as well. Absolutely. Now the Walking Dead, all shows on the Walking Dead. I mean, they're all character driven shows with the zombie element thrown in, the horror element. Uh, is this your first time walking, working on a, you know, quote unquote horror show, even though it's more of a, you know, character driven dramatic show with a horror background? Uh, have you done any horror work before? Uh, no, not really. I, I mean, I did a short with a friend years ago. Um, that was like the only thing I did, but that was something that we were just doing for fun as friends. They did some shorts, a series of shorts um, for YouTube like a long time ago, but this was my first um, foray into the genre. And uh, I really, really found myself enjoying it. Um, I think the genre, you know, you have that element, but it's there to bring out an extreme side of, of humanity and put characters in really tough positions to see that conflict. So I think it's a terrific genre. You know, I love growing up watching the slasher movies and we, you know, I watched the walking dead when it first came out. Um, and like all the horror movies that come out, you know, some of them I can't being, a, you know, getting older, you kind of can't stomach some of that stuff now, but some of them are so well done and their the performances are terrific in the story. So I, I'm, I love that I've got to um, explore that genre with uh, this franchise. I feel very grateful for that. As your career moves on, uh, you know, are you definitely more open now to doing more work in the horror genre? Oh yeah, I mean, absolutely. I don't, I don't see what why not. Um, you know, if that happens to come my way and it's an exciting story or the characters are great. Yeah. I'd, I'd love to, um, dive in, you know, I always wanted, I always want to do a Western and like a world war two genre type project. Um, but after working on the walking dead, I think, you know, it's another one of those really fun genres that as an actor, uh, can test you and push you to, to different places just because of the circumstances uh, m many of the characters find themselves in. And a lot of great performances are found in this genre too. So, Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Now, now as playing Dennis Graham in world beyond, did you find it was a physically demanding role to do? Yes. On, uh, yeah, it was because I, I, on the show there was like some physically demanding stuff that had to be done. I mean, filming in Richmond starting in the middle of winter that was that was physically demanding. Um, some of the hours we would you can go late into the night. Um, and also, I remember trying to f like working on the physicality of Dennis and what in this world. 10 years or so after the apocalypse, what would a soldier move like? What, what would he do to keep himself sane and regimented as Dennis would have been to be who he was in the show? Um, so there was a lot of physically demanding stuff that I made sure to do off camera um, that I wanted to come across on camera for him specifically and how I wanted him to come off. Um, yeah in the show i don't know if i'm being clear but no uh, no it makes perfect sense yeah. now you know in your acting career when it comes to stunts in particular do you like to do as much of the, your own stunts as they allow you to we know because of insurance and you know liability they want to keep the actors away from any kind of potential harm but when there is a chance for you to do your own stunts do you are you the kind of actor that really wants to go for it yeah, if there's a chance and it makes sense, I, I I love to do as much as I can. But I also understand that there are people who have careers doing these stunts and taking these risks and they're trained. And that's a job that they 
get to do as well. So it's, you know, it's a kind of like a balance between your actor ego of wanting to do as much as you can, but also, you know, there are people who are physically trained to do uh, dangerous stunts or do some stuff that maybe as an actor, like you want to do because you Mm -hmm. want to, prove yourself but at the same time if you do risk if you injure yourself or you cause an accident you can harm the whole production Mm -hmm. and on hold because you insisted on doing something so i think there's a fine balance um between wanting to do as much as you can and also respecting the people that are they're hired professionals to do those stunts so i i kind of walk that line i don't you know and every show is different. Some shows are really strict about how much an actor should do, like you said, because of insurance reasons. And some, you know, they they see what you're comfortable with. And if you have enough time to train to do the stunts, then I, I would love to do them as well. Um, but again, it all depends how much time you have. Like on a TV show, you might not have as much time episode to episode to train for a stunt as you would on a movie, you know? Yeah, yeah, I totally understand. Yeah. Now, you... You also have a a background in writing. You do writing. Uh, In your career, uh, how important is writing to you compared to acting? Writing, I've I've written a few things, like a few things with some friends uh, that was really satisfying, but it was, it's very hard work. Um, And it's something that right now, the stuff I'm writing for myself, I'm writing um, a story based on my father um, coming from Poland. And uh, that's something I'm doing on my own right now, on my own time. Um, But acting right now is kind of where I want to focus my energy and attention on. Um, And I'm kind of developing the writing in the background. And when there's something that I finish that I'm really passionate about, then I'm, I'm there to, to pursue it and, and try and see if I can get it made. But, Mm -hmm. um, acting takes up enough bandwidth right now. And I feel like I want to just get more experience in front of the camera, um, before switching careers or or trying to do both things at once. So it's, it's, it's great. There's a saying, um, a friend of mine's a, a writer and he says, actors write, writers finish and I, I thought that was really funny because there are a lot of ideas you i've started that i have not finished <laughs> that is so true um, yeah uh now that you have seen dennis uh his arc on the show uh we as fans of the walking dead world beyond uh you know are we you know in your opinion are you excited with you know the character and where they took him without giving away anything uh you know should we as fans be excited to see what unfolds with your character in the walking dead world beyond i'm gonna try and answer this without answering yeah you got a very Um, it's like a landmine you got a tiptoe yeah i'm i'm excited i think this season is going to be very different from the first season. And I think fans will be um, excited to see what happens. Uh, I remember as we were, as I was reading scripts, I was um, surprised. Um, and that's all I'll say. That's all I should say. Okay. Okay. That's fair. Yeah. That, that's perfect. Um, now, you know, the world beyond is a limited series. This is, it's uh final season you know how does that i mean have you ever taken a role on a on a tv show knowing that the season that you're coming in on is its final season uh no actually this was my no this is the first time i've i've done that um and i kind of found that it was exciting because usually sometimes you'll do a show like shield ran for, I think seven seasons. Mm -hmm. And there was a few seasons there, like the last three seasons, it was always on the fence of whether we're going to get another season or not. And so as like actors and as writers, you're kind of writing 
toward the end of the season. And sometimes you don't know, are we finishing the, the show or are we just finishing the season? Yeah. So knowing that about this show, um, while it's a, you know, it's sad that they won't get any more time to tell the story um, with, with this cast. I mean, Matt said, you know, he would have loved to have a few more seasons to explore more storylines and, and arcs. Um, but I, I was kind of excited. Well, they know that they're ending the show. So they know they got to tie off all these loose ends and stuff. So I thought as an actor and as uh, approaching the character, I thought that that could be something um, great mm -hmm. to be a part of knowing that they know where they have to go. They know how, how they want to end it. Um, and being asked to be a part of that journey, I was, I was very happy to, to jump in. And personally, as a fan myself, uh, just the first two episodes alone of season two, you can totally yeah. tell. Season one was great, but you can tell just from two episodes already that they really upped the game in season two. And I think it's just going to get crazier as the season progresses. Um, now that the main characters with Aaliyah, uh, who plays Iris Bennett, and they know what the CRM did to their home. And, you know, it's all out war. They're out to get them. It's, it's very fascinating. It's for me, I just can't wait to see what the next episode is going to bring. Uh, my question to you is, since the episode debuted this past Sunday, what has been the reaction from your followers, your fans, your friends and family uh, with you on The Walking Dead right now? Uh, well, my mom loved it, uh, of course. <laughs> <laughs> my mom loved it. Uh, the, the reaction from the fans has been really great. Um, like, I remember Annette telling me the fans are terrific on the show, and that's been proven true so far. Um, uh, you know, you start getting messages on, on Twitter and Instagram about, you know, Dennis and, and Jenny, a.k.a. Huck, um, and some people starting to like uh, create special accounts. They've seen episode three, um, so it's been it's flattering, it's exciting. Um, you know, friends friends are really enjoying the character, uh, and I think I hope I hope fans enjoy the the show and this season and the character I got to play. Um, and yeah, fingers crossed, I guess. Uh, now, obviously, season two of uh, World Beyond was shot during the, you know, we're still in the middle of a COVID pandemic. And every production, every production is, I know, AMC, uh, all of them, they're taking all these precautions. Uh, how is it different now for you working with all these uh, COVID precautions, which need to be in place to keep everyone safe? Um you know, how do you feel about it? Obviously, like I said, it's needed. Uh, you know, I know for the Walking Dead franchise, they extended the amount of days they had for shooting an episode. I believe it was either 8 to 10. Now they have like 12 or so. So how many mm -hmm. days did you guys get for one episode of World Beyond to shoot it? Oh, my God. Uh, that's a good question. I mean, I know it it's not shot like sequentially. Yeah, it was about we. It was about two episodes shot in a month. Wow. Um, with maybe some second units working as well, and yeah, there's a there was a lot of holding periods for your as an actor. You because you for this season we would have to test in we have to three tests before we can get to set so they had to add in those days um before you were allowed to go on set and shoot so it did add some time so there you know it did talking to a lot of the other cast members you know some of them it did feel a lot longer to shoot the season and sometimes you wouldn't see each other yeah as cast for long periods of time which was I'm sure a different experience from for the first season. Um, and same for me, you would like, you wouldn't see some of each other until the day of the scene um, or a table read. So 
you know, and again, it was all, you know, everyone's trying to keep the show going, you know, that there's jobs involved and keep everyone safe. Mm-hmm. So I think AMC and, and, and everyone on Walking Dead World Beyond did a great job to um, keep production going and finish, finish the show safely and on time. And, you know, hats off to all of them. You know, it adds it adds some stops and starts, but at the end of the day, it's worth it. They got it done. Yeah, it's worth it. Absolutely. It is worth it. Now, Virginia is really not known for a big film production, television production state. I live in the state of Virginia. I live about 90 minutes north of Richmond. Uh, was this your first time working as an actor in Virginia? And how did the locals in the Richmond area, now that you know the world beyond was has been there now for two years, how how do how do the the locals in Richmond you know treat the cast and crew, uh, you know, of the of the Walking Dead World Beyond? Uh, the locals were fantastic. The, I, I I loved Richmond. It had such a rich history. Oh yeah. Um, yeah, uh, a lot of history, and everyone in the, the locals in Richmond were like, there's that southern hospitality. Everyone got along. Everyone was really pleasant to be around. From where they put us up to the people taking us to set to when you went out to groceries or have dinner, it's it was. I really it made me want to visit the South more because um, I had only worked in Atlanta before this, and it was the same kind of vibe. Like you know, Southern hospitality. Everyone's really pleasant and says hello, how are you? Um, kind of the opposite of like a big city like L.A. or New York. So I, I loved it. I loved Richmond. It was a nice experience. Yeah, Richmond is a great little city. Now you have been. Uh you know, in two huge franchises, the Marvel uh, franchise and now the Walking Dead franchise. Do you consider yourself just really lucky to, you know, so far just being a part of those two huge franchises alone? Oh, yeah. I mean, absolutely. Um, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. was... uh, the, I was surprised me how many, how many fans around the world loved that show and how much that show meant to them, which kind of, I remember talking about this to at a convention with some fans, like when you're on set and you're shooting a show, you're in this bubble and sometimes it can just be like, you know, you're just there to work and you forget that the, the show you're working on touches people all over the world in different ways. And, the stories mean something to them that maybe you haven't even thought of. And then when you get to meet some of the fans and they, you know, they express to you how much they enjoyed your character and they wish they could see more. They want to know more about the show. It kind of reminds you like, Oh, that's right. We're doing this. We're here in Hollywood or wherever we are in our little bubble filming a show, but like it means something different to so many people around the world. So I find that um, such a privilege. Mm Mm-hmm. And I'm very grateful to people that watch, um, have watched my work or have been engaged in any of the genres or the, the franchises that I've been so fortunate to be involved with. And I'm looking forward to, um, you know, seeing how people react to The Walking Dead and, and some of the work I've done on that show. So nothing but love and gratitude and, you know. Now, Marvel and The Walking Dead have their origins in comic books, um, yeah, undeniably, yeah. and that seems to be growing. This the trend of source material coming for comic books, either being developed for film or television. I think it's a great uh, way to get you know comics onto the screen. It's been happening forever, but. Is is it me, or do you think the trend is increasing in the amount of comic books being uh, converted to on-screen television, films, and whatnot? No, I don't think I don't think it is you. I think IP is something that uh, studios and networks really value nowadays. Um, you know, I have a good friend whose show is out on FX called like Why the Last Man, and that was a, a, a oh. DC comic that was a big hit. Can I pause well. you for a second? Uh, because you mentioned Why the Last Man. I just came back from New York attending Comic Con, 
And, okay. uh, you know, I had the pleasure of uh, si sitting in uh, in a press roundtable with the entire cast and crew of Why, The Last Man. Oh, my God, yeah. yeah it was a very yeah. small, intimate room. It's a great show that's on FX. Uh, they're all lovely people. And it's just amazing that you just you mentioned that. And just literally the other day, I got to meet the you know almost the entire cast and crew on this show that uh, has its origins in comic books. So anyway, go on. I, I just I just I had to say. That. Yeah, no, that's that's terrific. Yeah, Eliza Clark, the showrunner, is 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 a, a good friend of ours. We've known her for years. Wow. Um, so we were thrilled when that happened. Yeah, and her show's fantastic. Um, but yeah, going back to your question, it's it's a IP from a I think it's a DC comic. Mm -hmm. So um, I think it's wonderful. I, I think it's great. I think there's so there's decades of comics out there that that we can draw from and tell stories and spin off or, or tweak some things. So I think it's a, an exciting time. Um, for the industry you know i at the same time i hope that we we still also um get to see some original uh material that's never been seen before i think that's exciting as well yeah um so i hope there's like a good balance there i don't know if i answered that question or no that no no you did answer, you but, absolutely uh, did as an yeah. actor now do you uh as your career moves on which ways do you see yourself challenging yourself as an actor? Like pursuing, what kind of roles uh, would you really love to do moving forward? I mean, you've done a lot of Soldier with S.H.I.E.L.D. You're an agent, you know. Uh, how do, you know, I'm, I'm assuming you don't want to get typecasted to where you play FBI agents or soldiers uh, what other roles do you want to push the boundaries to see what you can do with? Uh, I don't know if that question makes sense. No, no, it, it, it makes sense. I think, I think any role that when I read it and it makes me a bit nervous or scared to, to do, I want to run toward. Okay. Um, I also think like when, when you hear that question, like, oh, you've played a lot of soldiers or agents and stuff, those are just um, circumstances. That's a, that's a job description. I don't mind playing someone who happens to be a soldier, but if that part, if there's something to that part, whether it's a soldier, an agent, uh, you know, it, if, if the character is there, if there's interesting story, if there's some conflict, inner conflict and dynamic, and he's, they're moving the story forward, um, that that's exciting to me. Um, you know, like it's always funny when it's like, oh, you can play a soldier, and I go, well, that's just a, that's just a job description. Well, who is this person? You know. Mm -hmm. So that's how I kind of um, try to look at. That's roles and parts when I when I read something, you know, and of course there's genres that I'm really passionate about that I grew up watching that I would love to explore, you know, um, like westerns and war picks, um, hard, like you know this genre Walking Dead was really exciting, um, so I kind of I'm open to anything as long as it seems challenging, something you can sink your teeth into and, and challenge you as an actor as well. Now up until now, what would you say has been your most challenging role? Um, I would say Dennis has been a very satisfying part to play. Um, very satisfying, but I would say like my, one of the most early on, one of the most challenging things I did as an actor, I did a two man play in New York called cherry docks. And it was about uh, a skinhead who was convicted of murder and he's defended by his Jewish lawyer. And it's a two hander, um, and that was something that was an intimidating piece to get into. And that was uh, something that I came out, came out of the other end uh, feeling like if I can handle this, I can handle almost anything yeah. because it was so much to chew on. So, yeah, I mean, theater is some of like they say, like, 
there's going to the gym to get fit and like if you want to go to the gym for acting go to do some theater and i feel like that show was like a major workout for me as an actor um starting out now uh, do you feel as an actor with each role whether well it doesn't matter tv film you grow as an actor you know for you personally do you come away from every role that you've played uh getting something and growing from it oh yeah absolutely i think i i always learn a little bit more about um myself my as a person myself as an artist myself as a uh, um as an actor uh with every role i get to play um in it every part kind of requires something different of you mm-hmm. and i don't you know sometimes you get asked how do you prepare for a role um i don't view it as for me i don't view like what's your process like for like for me it's not like making eggs and bacon every every day for breakfast it's a different ingredients different meal you know and that's that's what it's like to get a new script, get a new character. I don't have a set way of going into a role. I kind of let it tell me what, what needs to be worked on. Sometimes you can pick up a script and you just get the character. And sometimes you pick up a script and you may understand it, but you might need to do use other tools and other methods to try and really dig in and get an understanding of where, where they're coming from, who they are and why they are the way they are. Um, so yeah, and every show leaves me with that new, uh, a new sense of. I'm sorry, I'm rambling now. No, like no, a, no, it a, makes a, a new sense of you know strengths and weaknesses and skills, you know. And sometimes you learn something new just trying to study a new role, and you're like, oh, I I got to learn how to do this, trying yeah. to play this part. Yeah. So what helps you is when you get a new role, is you don't overanalyze the character. You sort of let the character grow and flow and see where you can take it. And is that pretty accurate? No, uh, sort of. You, I, what I meant was like sometimes you can get a you can get a script and you kind of just oh I get this person. Sometimes you don't, and sometimes you do have to do a little bit. You do a lot of homework. Um, I usually enjoy diving in and doing a lot of backstory um, and world building for the, the roles I do get to play. How I do that and how I get into something is varies from part to part. Okay. I guess what I'm trying to okay. say, you know, some, yeah. So in regards to world beyond, did you have, uh, like special one-on-one meetings with either Matt or any of the directors or any of the other producers to get a better handle on how to play Dennis? Yeah, Matt, like when, before we started, Matt filmed me in on some backstory for the show and where he had, where Dennis would have come from and, and the relationships he would have had with people. And then as we kept filming, um, he was always available and very collaborative. If I had any questions for episodes coming up, um, he, he had a, he had some answers and he was very um, open to, to discussing that stuff. I mean, they would sometimes watch live takes as we're rolling. They would watch him the takes on from video village on a feed and were able to, to chime in with the director as well. Wow. Um, yeah. And Matt was really great. Cause sometimes we'd wrap a scene or something. He'd send an email right after. And it was like that, you know, I really enjoyed this. This is great. Um, coming up for the next thing i think we just focus on let's try and get this sense across from for the character or or in the scene and i thought that was very helpful yeah so he was available when you needed him um at all times so it was great that's amazing very supportive that's amazing max uh that this has been a fascinating conversation i would love to talk to you again maybe after the season is over and we get to see dennis's full arc 
on the show. I uh, know, right? It's like we don't have that. I know. We talk we, about too much. Yeah. When I got the call, I was like, it's only been an episode. I know. <laughs> I know. Be, uh, it's I like know. pulling teeth. So we got to bring you back sometime after the season ends so we can get a real breakdown of Dennis's arc and how they end up wrapping season two of The World Beyond. Thank you so much for being our guest. Uh, what would you like to share if you had anything to share with the audience that you can share uh, in regards to World Beyond? I mean, you know, let's get excited. This is going to be a crazy ass season. Yeah, I think um, it's they should be excited. They should uh, stick with the stories. I think they're they're going to love what Matt and Scott and everyone is where they're taking the show. Um, I mean, yeah, I, I, I would tell you like you, you would get a script and be like, Oh shit. Okay. All right. We're going That's with what, that. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, you know, stick now, with it. And then when it's done, I'll be happy to come back and talk. Now, Scott, see what you guys thought being uh, the yeah. chief operating officer of the franchise. Did he spend any time this season on the set of world beyond? I mean, he's a busy man. Yeah, I I actually did not get to meet him on set. Um, I'm sure he was busy, you know. Oh yeah, I mean, I think <laughs> about two other huge shows and think and about what it's like else. being yeah. the chief operating yeah. officer of the Walking Dead franchise. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. Um, but Matt was 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 in charge of Walking Dead World Beyond, and he was he was there for everyone. Um, and I've only heard great things about Scott. So, Scott, if you're watching, thank you for having me on yeah. uh, part of the universe. Yeah. And those who don't know, Matt, you know, came from the 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 mother show is what I call it as a writer. Uh, yeah. You know, as the majority of the showrunners in the Walking Dead franchise, you know, come from the writers' room. Angela Kang, who's the showrunner of The Walking Dead, Ian and Andrew, who are doing Fear. Matt, who's doing the world beyond. So it's great that, you know, all, all of them got their roots and start in the franchise from the main show. And I think that really helps them going on into the spinoffs and bringing the spinoffs to life. Would you agree with that? Yeah, there's a real cohesiveness um, between the worlds and keeping everything uh, true to what they establish. Mm-hmm. Um of course, every show has their own, you know, specific story and and tones, maybe. But yeah, Matt, like everyone was on the same page and trying to uh, follow the rules established with the previous shows. And I thought that was great. Yeah, I agree. Very helpful. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you so much, Max. I want to thank our audience who tuned in tonight to watch us. If you're watching us archive, thank you for watching. Uh, just any final thoughts you want to share before we go? Uh, just. Be kind to each other. Give a compliment to everyone uh, and make the world a better place. Absolutely. And thank you for having me. No, it was our pleasure. This has been a fascinating hour. Thank you, Max. Thank you to our audience. Until next time, stay safe. And on behalf of Max and myself, remember, always stay walking. Good night, everybody. Always stay walking. Good night, everyone. Thank you, John. No problem.